Fairness Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings. I hope and trust I still find you well. We have trekked our way from Monday and we are in Friday. What does the Lord have to say to us in Exodus? The chapter is 32 and we want to look at verse 7 and work our way to verse 10. The King James Version reads as follows. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down, for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and worshipped it, and have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now, therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make thee a great nation. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word as we spend a moment in prayer. Let us pray, my friends. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege of calling upon your name. Uh, dear Father, we hear your voice now and again, but we are quick to fall back into our path of sin. We pray, dear Father, that you may never punish us from, the, from thy presence, that you may continue to call us by thy name. Dear Lord, save us from the lives of sin. As we go into this weekend, how we pray that you continue to minister unto us through thy word and through thy ministers. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask, Amen. My dear friends, just allow me to raise five points as we begin this week. At point number one, notice this. As God addresses Moses, he says unto Moses, Go, dismiss him, get thee down to thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt. You know, there comes a time because of a life of sin that God disowns us. And he says, you are no longer mine. I remember the book of Hosea where he says, you shall bear a child and you shall name this child, not my people. Lo, Ami, you are no longer my people. God has brought the children of Israel all the way from Egypt and route to Canaan. But he says, because of your sins, you now belong to Moses. Perchance, because of the way we have conducted ourselves during the week, God has, says, has said, as you go into the weekend, you are no longer mine. You belong to the church where you fellowship. As you go back into the communities, you are no longer mine. You belong to the leaders of the communities where you dwell. As you go back to your daily living, you are no longer mine. You belong to the nations that you hail from. I have no relationship with you. Why? Because you are departing from what I have sent you to do. God is going to make this declarative statement not long from now when he shall say unto those of us who shall be found on the wrong side of the law, depart from me, ye doers of iniquity. I know you not. Matthew 25 says, they are going to say, but Lord, but Lord, didn't we cast out demons in thy name? Did we do these miracles in thy name? And God will still say, I know you not. And this is a foresign. This is a foretelling of what will happen. God shall say eventually, you are not mine. I have no relationship with you. Where is this happening? At the apex, at the top of Mount Sinai. God is in the process of communing with Moses and giving him the Decalogue. It has been 40 days and 40 nights. The children of Israel have grown tired of waiting because of their lack of patience. I admire the way God, while transacting his business, shows us something. He is way up in heaven now, but he takes note of what is happening on earth. He knows what happens in the camp of Israel. Not only does he know, but he also hears because he narrates to Moses and says, Moses, these people have done the following. They have built a calf. Not only have they built a calf, they have gone on to say, these be thy gods. Worship them. They have brought us out of Egypt. We are now going into the promised land because of these gods. God sees our actions. 
God sees whatever we do. What we construct is not hidden from the Lord. What we say is not hidden from the Lord. The utterances of our lips are known to God. That's why we then conclude he is an omnipresent and an omniscient God. He did not only know from heaven, but he was already down there with the children of Israel, observing everything that was happening. He had Moses before him, and he had Aaron and the children of Israel right before him as they danced around the golden calf. Children of Israel, know this and take note, we serve a God who is omnipresent and a God who is omniscient. Point number three, they go on to say, these be thy gods. These be thy gods. These are the children of Israel. Allow me to fast forward. Later on, David shall ascend to the throne. As he moves off, Solomon shall ascend to the throne. As he moves off, Rehoboam shall take over. But Rehoboam fails to take care of this kingdom that has been given by his father. Having received the counsel from the elders, he decides not to abide by it, but he seeks the counsel of youth in the process the nation of Israel is split into two. Two nations remain on one end. It is Judah and Benjamin. The rest of the nations move over to the other end. They form what has come to be known as the Ephraimites. Now Rehoboam, the son of Nebad, I mean, sorry, Rehoboam was the son of Solomon. Jeroboam, the son of Nebad, is the one who was in charge of the other 10 tribes. These are the 10 tribes which are commonly referred to as Samaria, or the other ones are referred to as Judah. Now, when Jeroboam is in charge of Samaria, he then builds two calves in the area, vicinity where Caesarea of Philippi was located. These two, he erects them so that the children of Israel will not go back to Jerusalem to worship. And these are the words that he says to them. These are your gods, children of Israel. Worship them. Two golden calves were erected. What am I saying to you today? Perchance there are things we have done during the week, things that are against the will of God. Not long from now, our children are going to do the same. History shall be repeated. Our very children will walk in our footsteps. Will this be something to celebrate? Will this be something that we will be proud of? Think twice before you do certain things in the course of life. Your children may come walking right after you. Point number four. Now there's this other interesting thing that I find here. Moses is talking to the children of Israel in chapter 20. And the children of Israel say, Moses, do not let God talk to us lest we die. But let God talk to you. Whatever he says unto you, that we shall do. Now we come here and God is now talking to Moses at chapter at verse 10, and he says, Let me alone so that my wrath can wax hot against these people. They are a stiff-necked people. God is a God who has emotions. God is a God who gets angry. God is a God who doesn't want people to cross his path. But even then, this is more, 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 more exciting. God now talks to Moses as if he needs his permission. And he says, Moses, let me alone. Just leave me be. Let me be my, myself and blow off some hot steam. You know, it's as if now Moses is the restrainer of God. Moses is being given this vantage position as if God needs authorization from Moses on how to proceed. I found this to be a vantage position. Now God even goes on at point number five to offer Moses this great offer. And he says, I will consume all these people above all. I will make of thee a great nation. May I talk to you, my friends, as we come to an end? Perchance you may be given the best offer that you can ever receive. Be like Moses. Do not take advantage of those who are in the wrong. Do not capitalize on their mistakes. Do not bury the living but stand in the gap between the living and the dead. Intercede for them. Make sure they come back to life. Make sure they are saved. Do not capitalize on the sins of the fallen. Do not be calling upon fire to consume them so that you can build your legacy on the graves of others. May the good Lord bless you as you go into this weekend. Bless you until we meet again on Monday. Blessings and peace.